Good afternoon. Welcome to day three of the five day free course. Let's begin with uh, the session today. So today's session is about time management, interpersonal skills and confidence. So let's talk about time management. When we talk about time management, what are the components of time management? So let's start with that. So as you all know, as you all are aware that a uh, typical day on the exam day starts with uh, reading the question on the door for which you get one minute and a half. Then you enter the room, confirm your identity to the examiner, and then you sit down, face your patient or um, whatever your task may be. It may be a mannequin, it may be a patient, it may be a phone call. So whatever your task is, you you take a seat and you start your scenario. So for that, you get about um, eight minutes. So how do you manage taking a history, doing an examination, uh, talking about tests and about treatment for the condition, giving red flags? There are a lot of components to finish in eight minutes. So today we are talking about how do we finish those components in eight minutes? So basically, the plan to finish all these components in eight minutes should begin two months before you give the exam or you plan to give the exam. Okay. Basically, practice is the only way by which you can improve time management. Okay. Now, why I say this is because when you have information regarding a scenario, this can be the source of this information could be the GMC UK website itself or it could be any of the academies that you choose. Okay, when you have this information available to you, if you do not practice the scenario that you have with you, if you do not practice and you have read everything about the scenario and you expect it to be the same way as it is mentioned in your notes, then please be informed that it will not be the same thing. Basically, when you get a collection of notes from various um, resources, you get various aspects of the examination which is being discussed with you. If you have about 12 points in your notes, that doesn't mean you will be quizzed regarding all the 12 points in the exam. Okay, There will be some points which will be eliminated and your job would be to speak only the relevant stuff. So how do you do that? You take, when you take a history, you ask the relevant history and you give management only for the relevant positive findings in the history. Please take two concerns. Just take a history, do the management for only those two concerns, then reverse the role, okay? And ask your friend to take up the other two concerns and discuss management for only those two concerns, okay? In this way, in eight minutes, you would be finishing the relevant requirement, required uh, performance and you would be also assessing and listening sorry, to your friend or your practice partner's uh, performance and you would be able to assess them too. So in this way, you are learning about four concerns in a particular scenario whose notes you already have Okay, or before you decide to give your exam. You have to be very well versed with these things. There is no shortcut this okay especially for people who have been out of practice for more than a month please remember you need to practice every day for two months continuously there is no shortcut for this there is no excuse for this please practice i cannot express enough how important it is to practice for example when you have the case of end of life care scenario okay let me tell you you can never have a role player who will play the role of end-of-life care 100% accurately like that of the real patient or like that of the simulator in an examination. You can never have anybody like that. Maybe you can have someone experienced as close to that as possible. However, remember when you see a simulator in the exam for speaking about end-of-life care, these people are... they have taken a course, they have taken a training to act or to enact the scenario in the same way as a patient, a real patient 
who has reached the end of life would react okay they have taken a training for that so they perform with 100% accuracy if you want to match their level of accuracy please practice end of life care principles in front of the mirror looking at yourself listen to yourself listen to the sympathy in your voice listen to the tone of your voice listen to the empathy in your voice listen to these things in yourself first if you do not listen to all of these things inside yourself first then what you reproduce in the exam would be something that is a product of nervousness and that will not sound right okay please remember in our practices in the countries where we come from okay end of life care even though it is being emphasized now but perhaps if you are someone like me who has graduated a long time ago end of life care was not emphasized a lot okay most of us have very limited exposure to end of life care speaking because usually it is done by the consultant and usually the patient prefers that it's in a quiet atmosphere and nobody else is in the room okay this is the patient preference so the exposure to this is very very limited i do agree in that scenario what are you going to do if your exposure is very low that is not an excuse for you performing poorly in that scenario okay in fact you have to perform in the best way possible why because if this is a scenario which decides components of end of life care you can find components of end of life care on the gmc uk website itself you do not need to go anywhere else if you just go there open the ethical section of gmc uk website it speaks about 3 to 4 different scenarios of how to talk about end of life care and these are the exact same scenarios that you have in the exam there is nothing different except for the names of the patients okay so there is no excuse to have not read those at least before the exam what you can do is take your mobile phone stand in front of the mirror read aloud that case and what the doctor has done in that scenario read it to yourself look at your face look at your expressions look, listen to the tone of your voice and that's how you improve yourself for talking about end of life care and you become confident in this um, particular section now i have spent a lot of time discussing this but this is because i wanted to give a reference regarding how you can work on your confidence number 1 and number 2 how to manage the time okay end of life care scenarios are based on a very very simple protocol that is the spikes protocol if you want to know more about the spikes protocol please go to gmc uk's youtube channel and check what they have to say about the spikes protocol there is one of the macmillan nurses who gives a small talk about the spikes protocol please see those videos please be self reliant please look at ways how you can improve yourself do some research on your own you have me you are very lucky i am telling you about these things because i have researched these things myself when i gave the exam however i want you to know that you are not alone i was in the same situation as you i had no guidance even though i had spent good quality or good quantity of money on getting exposure to these things but i never knew what it is like i passed the exam and i started talking about end of life care only by doing these changes nothing else helped me except the gmc uk website and the video which explains it it's not magic please do not expect that if you see the video once and you read the scenarios once you are done with end of life care it's that's not how it works you have to spend at least 3 to 4 days practicing this reading this looking at the components of this and only then you come to the point where you are confident enough and you actually get a 12 out of 12 or you pass the scenario okay it's not easy you have to work very hard okay especially now in these um okay in these unstable times nobody has a definite answer for anything and nobody can tell you um yeah this is what happens in the exam day and this is exactly what is going to happen to you even if someone has already given the exam if you know someone like that who has already given the exam and they say that this is exactly what happens on the exam day you do know what is going to happen to you however please don't rely on it 100% okay if you look at 
the point of view of an examiner or the point of view of someone who sets the exam then candidates have had more than three or four months to prepare themselves and the resources are already there right so there is an expectation that you would have read through those resources and you would have worked on them this expectation is always there please do not think that this expectation is not there okay basically um, as I said earlier also that um, if you ask me people have been working very very hard especially the people who work for the NHS website and the people who work for GMC UK they have worked extraordinarily hard because even if you open the NHS website you can see a lot of positive changes there are color changes there is context content changes everything is there and that clearly shows that they have been working continuously and they have been working very hard so there is no excuse at all for any candidate to perform poorly in the exam please remember that coming to interpersonal skills what comprises of interpersonal skills as i've written here it's not just sympathy empathy and using stock phrases interpersonal skills starts from the point where you enter into the cubicle okay it starts when you enter as soon as you enter your interpersonal skills have started okay what i mean by saying this is okay now because of the outbreak of covid-19 we do advise social distancing and we advise avoid to avoid shaking hands and keeping contact physical contact to a minimum right so even before the covid-19 outbreak it wasn't any different okay see there are some patients um, based on their uh, posture you have to decide whether they are someone you would like to shake hands with or not. So this was before COVID-19. After now, during this current scenario, right? Do not offer handshake, right? And um, how do you start with your interpersonal skills as soon as you enter? The way you introduce yourself. My advice would be the first thing that you can do in your interpersonal skills is to eliminate that boundary. You are being tested at the level of FY2. You are not being tested at the level of senior house officer or consultant. Please remember that. And you can just say, my name is Nafia Shafi and I'm the junior doctor in this department. Okay. With that small, simple thing, you are eliminating a very big boundary. You are telling your patient that I am a doctor, but you're saying I'm a junior doctor. And my name is Nafia Shafi. So you are not including that suffix before your name. And that in itself eliminates the boundary. When you are going for the exam, please try to eliminate the boundary of you being when this, this boundary has been taken off, right? They are very comfortable to talk to you. So my advice is, please, when you introduce yourself, just say your first name, your last name, and that you are a junior doctor more than enough, okay? So that's the point number one. So that's how the first thing that you do in your interpersonal skills. Second thing in the interpersonal skill is allowing the patient to speak. Allow them to speak. When they are telling you some information, even if it sounds very annoying, okay, some typical complaints, what do you do in that sense? So how do you demonstrate your interpersonal skills? You allow them to speak. Let her finish everything, whatever she has to say. So she has told you about arthritis, headache, problems in her leg. She has told you about... Um, Various things. She's given you various list of complaints. So all you can do is when she stops talking and she has said everything. So you can tell her that, okay, I I, I can see that um, there are quite a few complaints with which you have come to us today. But what is what are the few complaints which really bother you and you would like me to look into those complaints first? So then she will tell you, doctor, my headache. I have a very bad headache for the last five six days and I don't know why this headache has started and I think it's because of these other conditions that I have so basically when she has told you this elaborate history right so if you were not listening right if you didn't allow her to speak and if you were not listening you are going to be losing scores in interpersonal skills okay so please allow them to speak and please listen when they speak they would have already told you so please listen very carefully allow them to speak and when they speak, listen to them. Please don't get bored. Please don't sit there and think, oh my God, why is she talking so much? I just want her to come to the point. Please don't do all of this. Okay, When she's talking, 
have a nice sweet smile on your face don't grin don't have a big huge smile you know no just a small small smile okay that you are actively listening to her keep nodding your head and keep listening to what she's saying so that's another point in interpersonal skills your body language should be welcoming for her to speak so if she's speaking allow her to speak she would have given you all the information that she wants to give you already what she hasn't said confirm with her that and then move on okay so this is point number 2 in interpersonal skills now when someone tells you a sad story when they say that um you know i was examining myself for example breaking bad news of a breast cancer patient so when she tells you i was examining myself doctor and i found that i have a lump in my breast and i'm just very scared i'm very concerned about this so you are going to acknowledge that that's point number 3 of interpersonal skills empathy okay so the third thing is empathy okay acknowledging that they faced a problem and offering a solution or offering them to talk more about it okay i can see how distressful it was i can see i can only imagine how distressful it was for you to have examined the lump when you were doing a self examination however do you want to say something more about it or can i ask you a few questions okay so it would be a good idea to ask her if there's anything else she wants to convey with that because sometimes this patient she might have examined she might have found the lump and there might have been a discharge when she pressed over the lump so make sure that you acknowledge you ask them if there's anything else with the information that they have given you that they would like to say when they say no doctor nothing else but i'm just very very worried that i'm very scared that you know i found this lump okay is there a reason why you are scared yes yes doctor i'm i'm scared because um I, my friend she was also diagnosed with breast cancer and i think i i have it too doctor this breast cancer happened by person to person contact okay so then you have to explain her that breast cancer doesn't happen with person to person contact however there are a few reasons why someone can get breast cancer i would like to ask you a few questions they may sound a little bit serious but i hope that you know you are comfortable answering them if you are not please let me know i will stop okay so you have to make the consultation come out in a natural flow okay now these things when you empathize with someone you will be able to ask if you do not empathize with them you will not be able to ask so this is something that we expect usually all of us have empathy in us okay it's not a skill that you need to learn okay? most of us almost all of us have empathy in us all you need to do is look inside yourself and and bring it out in the exam okay now next thing empathy so this was about empathy now sympathy how do you express sympathy sympathy is not just by using those strong phrases you know i'm so sorry to hear about this and all of that you can express sympathy in many ways what you can do is when you have heard their complaint you take their complaint and then you do something about it so even that is sympathy so when someone is telling you that i've had a headache for 5 6 days and you tell them that yeah that sounds very distressful let's look into this matter you are already demonstrating sympathy there is no need to give a 4 to 5 minute speech that um yeah you know this so sounds so distressful um i don't know what i would have done if i was in your place and i'm pretty sure that this headache has just left you debilitated do not say things like that let them speak so you've had this headache so how has this affected you in your daily life what were the things you were able to do before this headache what are the things you are not able to do now so when you start inquiring about those things and you start talking about those things you are already demonstrating sympathy there is no need for stock phrases okay now moving on what else is the component of interpersonal skills active listening and offering help so you need to offer help to this patient take care of what's bothering them for example if you have a patient who is really angry because they feel that their son or their daughter was not taken care of properly what can you do you have to help them you have to demonstrate your interpersonal skills by helping them okay so you have to do everything possible to help them how do you help them now if they want to speak to someone you try to arrange an appointment with the person they want to speak to if they want to write a letter or they want to make a complaint you allow them to write a letter or you allow them to make a complaint 
right all of this comes under interpersonal skills so there's quite a lot in interpersonal skills and it's unique to every situation i do agree i do agree that um it's not possible to remember more than 100 roles for each and every scenario but basic things like showing your interpersonal skills when you enter allowing the patients or the simulators to speak offering them a solution taking a record of their wishes taking note of what they want right now even if the demand is not something that you can fulfill that doesn't mean you do not listen to it okay just you can ask them to speak so when you ask them to speak you can find out what do they want what do they think is going to help them get rid of what's bothering them so do ask about their ideas about what can help them i'm not telling you act on those ideas i'm saying allow them to speak allow them to present their ideas so always give them an open line to present their ideas even that demonstrates interpersonal skills if a patient wants to request a wheelchair right and you don't give them that opportunity to request for a wheelchair then you are not demonstrating interpersonal skills effectively because a wheelchair is something which is easily available in the hospital and you don't need to travel miles to go and get it for them however you do need to take note of what they think they would like to make it out of the room so it's very important so these small little things comprise of interpersonal skills it's not just saying hi hello good morning it's not limited to that okay it's not limited to that hi hello good morning and good afternoon and i wish you have a nice day and thank you so much for telling me about all your problems these are important but it's not limited to that okay if there's a patient who has a learning disability they has they are hesitant to speak to you they are scared because you are a new person you are a junior doctor you are a new person they never saw you before and they are scared to open up to you then interpersonal skills comprises of asking the person with a learning disability would you like someone to be here in the room with you as i speak to you for your comfort is there someone i can call so they say yes it's my sister can you call my sister can you call my carer they are waiting outside can you call them even that comprises interpersonal skills you will be tested for that okay you are going to be tested for that so please don't think because you did not say oh i'm so sorry you have a learning disability i will try my best to make it simple for you no a person who has a learning disability please do not acknowledge that to them in the cubicle okay they have a learning disability you know that but don't go inside and say oh yeah i read that you have a learning disability i saw it in my notes what can i do for you how can i help you please don't don't behave like that just tell them i can see that you're quite anxious talking to me is there someone i can call so that you are more comfortable as i speak to you there's a difference between these two situations which i have just said work on those things that comprises interpersonal skills so that's for today that's all so i have given you references examples i have told you how to improve confidence practice improves confidence if you are unable to find a practice partner please practice with yourself it will help you a lot okay goes a long way any form of practice that you invest into even if it's practicing with yourself it is still practice and it will help you okay so that's one thing then um, interpersonal skills comprise of many many things and not just stock phrases it's good to know the stock phrases but always remember at every step of the way even in history taking even in examination even in speaking about management um, interpersonal skills comes into play always remember to maintain a two way conversation in the exam when you are taking a history you are maintaining a two way conversation when you are doing an examination please make sure you maintain a two way conversation always ask your patient permission before inspection palpation and percussion okay you need to tell them that okay i'm going to do this are you comfortable with that if you are not if at any point of time you want me to stop please let me know how does that sound yes doctor that sounds fine move forward then you go on to speaking about management in management 
please don't verbalize everything like a robot and come outside no you will say this is what we think is going on with you do you have any questions yes doctor am i going to go blind and you tell them why do you think you're going to go blind so then you allow them to speak so they tell you the reasons why they think they're going to go blind and then you talk about those reasons so you tell them okay this is your concern but you know you told me you feel like you're going to go blind because of this so what i will do is i'll offer you a solution and when you go home you watch out for this is that okay with you do you have any more questions is there anything else i can do for you finish your station and then you're done okay that's all that's 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 interpersonal skills in a nutshell i couldn't explain everything i couldn't go scenario by scenario i apologize for that but i hope that whatever i have told you um it has made sense and you have understood something and um this has been a good review or a, i i do hope that it has helped you okay so that's all for today and i'll see you tomorrow um tomorrow is case presentation to we'll talk about three components of a case that is scenario history examination findings and management see you all tomorrow thank you so much for taking your time and attending the session thank you very much i appreciate it